Hey y'all, today we're going to cover movement over pitfalls, like edges of cliffs or holes in the ground. This involves implementing movement checks for landing in pits or opening in the ground or dropping into manholes. There are examples of classic beat-em-up games that don't involve pits or jumping over pits, like Final Fight, but some of you, so some of you, may not be looking to implement this. In other games like these, pitfalls can sometimes be insta-kills. Before we move forward, I'd like to thank all my viewers. I recently hit 1,000 subscribers and I could not have done that without y'all. Please continue to give me feedback and ask questions and let me know about other topics that you are interested in. And a quick shout out to Mount Matt Belcher for being the 1,000th subscriber. If this is the first time you're on my channel, this video is part of a series focusing on beat em up style games. If you haven't watched my previous episodes, I strongly suggest you go back and watch those first as each episode builds on the other. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to get alerts when, you, when I drop more videos like this. Okay, um, I've included a link to the set of sprites that I'm using in this video to display some common pitfalls. In this case, I'll be using a hole in the ground, an opening on my pirate ship, and just a plain old black square. If you, don't need to any, if you don't need to use any of these sprites, feel free to use your own. Let's talk about why pitfalls may differ in beat em up style games compared to other video games. We know that, based on our previous episodes, that characters that jump rely on their base or shadow object to convey a certain thickness, which I like to call slice, which we use to do things like detect hits with other enemies. We also use these base shadows to determine when our character has fallen into a hole or off the map. And we only check if our character has fallen into a pit or off the map when that base and character meet together at the end of their jump. Before we go through how I implement these pitfalls and the new edits to the code, um, please make sure that you like and subscribe. And then we'll get into it. I'm going to pull up Unity and um, we're going to chat about some of the new things that we're, we've implemented this time around. If you haven't already, go and download that set of sprites or find the sprites that you want to use for your pitfalls. And I've already downloaded this for, for this episode um, and I've dragged them into my project window. Um, and in the sprites that I provided, there's three individual sprites that you should slice up. If you haven't done this already, then I'll quickly go through this aspect for you. Uh, we click on the object, look in the inspector, and we want to change the texture type from uh, to anything into Sprite 2D UN UI. Once you've selected that, then uh, the win menu should change slightly, and you want to change the sprite mode to multiple because we want to end up cutting this one whole sprite into many smaller ones. From there, you would want to hit apply, and then we're going to go into the sprite editor. From here, we can slice up these individual these sprites into smaller ones. And uh, if you're using the ones that I've provided, then you can just quickly go to slice and change and click on slice again. We don't need to change any of the parameters. We want to make sure that it's set to automatic. And for this case, since we're not using um, their height to to judge where these pitfalls are in relation to our characters because we're going to put them onto individual uh, sorting layers, we can keep the pivot center. And so you just hit slice and then the individual ones you can see are going to be applied there and then we want to hit apply. We don't have to hit save or anything, close this window and you should be able to see these individual ones that you can just drag into your scene. From there, if once you drag it in there and you don't see it, the object visibly in your scene, you can see that there's, um, you can highlight that object. We want to change the sorting layer to something that is above your, maybe your layer for your level. Um, and so you would want to go to your sprite renderer. And uh, let me display my cursor so it's easier for you to see. We want to go to your s the sprite renderer, additional settings change the sorting layer to something that is above your default. In this case, I'm putting my my pitfalls to belong in the level sorting layer. And you can see that this one becomes available to see. And then we want to apply a some sort of 2D collider to these objects. And um, in this case, since this is not a regular shape, um, I want to 
uh, you could use something like a Polygon Collider 2D. Make sure that you're selecting 2D. And there we want to make sure that we're using is trigger because we want a character to possibly pass through this barrier. And um, now we want to apply these objects. Let's say that you use th these other ones as well. We want to have these objects, these pitfall objects, have a layer that bel belongs to a specific layer. In this case, I've already created a, a pit layer. And if you haven't done that already, it's really easy to create new layers. And this largely affects how objects behave in the physics world and how other objects within other layers interact with them. So we want to go over here and click on this. This is a drop-down menu. And if you don't have one that it, the has a pitfall or a pit layer, then I suggest you go to Add Layer. And it's going to change your inspector to display all the existing layers. In this case, I've already added a layer called Pit. Uh, you don't have to hit save or anything. You can go back and select the object that you want to change now. And since we just created that layer uh, to the list of layers, we have to go back to this area here and then actually apply the layer that we created. And you can look at, in my example, I have this object it belongs to the pit layer. This one also belongs to the pit layer. And this belongs to the pit layer. The reason that we do this is because we're using some physics check as our character jumps over them to say that, oh, this object, um, we're looking for only objects that belong to the pit layer. And if I happen to fall into it, I want to do a certain thing. In this case, we're going to freeze my character and prevent it from moving. Later on, in a later episode, we could apply damage if we wanted to, or we could play a specific animation. But we have now set up our, our pit objects uh, to be interacting with our character. Just to review, we made sure that our, our sprites were rendered on a certain sorting layer. And then we added a 2D collider of certain sort just to match the shape. We want to make sure that we pick a collider that only follows the shape of our, our sprite. And so um, f this is good for the polygon collider for this trapezoid. For this one, we wouldn't have to use uh, a polygon. We could just pick a box collider. For this circular one, I would suggest using the polygon collider. We set all the colliders to be is trigger, and then we applied a specific layer that I called pit. It could be pitfalls. It could be something else that you wanted. But it should be separate from the other ones that we have we have been using so far. Great. Now, let's look at the, um, the code for our character. So let's go back to our character now. And um, I've made some changes to our character movement. Uh, let me go back to my notes because I have some specific things I want to talk about. Um, if we look at the code, and um, I suggest possibly look at, uh, pausing when I highlight some errors. Uh, here, for lines 32 to 39, we're creating some new variables. And these are mainly for us to keep track of where our, our characters are colliding with other possible pit objects. And we are creating a layer mask so that we're only examining objects that belong to a certain layer, like how we applied it just now. And then we want to be only checking um, for our character. Let's go back into Unity real fast. We have two main parts to our character. And we've talked about this before in previous episodes. For my character, there are two, two bits. We have the main character, and that's, in this case, the turtle. And then the other part is the shadow or the base. And the code wants to know when our character and the base come together. And then we're going to examine a small part of our base right around here to say that is the base touching a pitfall object or an object that belongs to the pit layer. And if it is, then our code is going to either play an animation or deal damage. In this case, the code that I'm using right now is making our character freeze. And so let me highlight some portions. B beyond those new variables that we have right here, these are helping us describe wh what objects belong to a certain pit layer and um, how we uh, are we going to execute code from the base or shadow area. Jumping down to one lines 190, this is where you might have to add some more code. I've created a function called detect pit. And what it does is it says sending a short ray from the base of my my 
my base shadow object downward and it's only looking for objects that belong to the pit layer and if it returns something then I'm gonna set my can move boolean to false because I if this returns true right here this hit object if it is true or returns an object that um, we ran into then it's gonna set our can move ability to be false and if we look back at our update in our in our move function we have a check that starts out with if our character can move then we're gonna do all these things based on our movement we're gonna be able to jump and we're gonna be able to move horizontally but this is all wrapped in the ability to can move so uh, if we just move if we just cut this out this is showing us that there's a lot of code that's based on the ability to move and this is common for uh, any sort of 2d style game in that our characters should have should be freezable in some point. Maybe they're taking damage and then having a knockback. At the, which point we want to ignore player movement uh, and negate any sort of momentum that they might have. And so that's why we have this can move wrapping. When we fall into a pit, we don't want our character to be able to move anymore. That's probably the number one thing first. And then we might apply an animation. And so this is the first step. So we have this detect pit method. And we're inserting that into lines. Uh, let's see, where is that getting called? That's getting called within our update and lines 103. And so it's saying if our character is on the base, we want to check if we're standing on a pit. If we are, then we're going to freeze our character and then apply damage or maybe uh, play a death animation, some something like that. Um, in this slide, this is a uh, from one of the Turtles games. You can see that this character moves into the, the manhole, and then they they're playing a little animation. This is similar to something that we could do, right? And this is checking when that character falls in there that they do that check. And so we now have a little window to do that if we want to. We're detecting the pit if when our character and when our character and its base come together. So we don't check when our character's in midair, but when it comes back down onto the base, then we're gonna check, are we standing on a pit? If we are, then, then we'll do that thing. A Couple other lines, 159. This is when we are, I'm doing, I'm implementing this thing where when our character jumps over a pit, let's say it's moving over here like this, I think it would be really awkward that when our character jumps into the air that we still see the shadow because this is sort of unrealistic. And so I've made some codes to, to say that if we're off our base and we're above a pit, then we're going to deactivate the sprite renderer until our character moves back onto plain land or above plain land, and then we are making the sprite renderer reactivate. And so this code right here basically says is our base or shadow area touching a pit area? If it is, um, while we're in midair, then we're going to deactivate our base uh, base sprite renderer. And when we are not touching a, a pit object and we're in midair, then we're going to have the sprite renderer be active. Cool. And the last couple other things, um, at lines 152, um, when our character cannot move. This is basically the consequence of our can move conditional. If we can move, then we can take an input and make our character move. But if we can't, then we're going to freeze our character's rigid body velocity and our base rigid body velocity. I'm going to have a, a copy of this code that we're updating and it's going to be in the description. So. Uh, hopefully you've been watching this entirety and um, now you can copy this and make sure that you, up to this point, jot down what your values are because you might make your character jump higher or lower, but once you apply this new script, you might lose all that information. But make sure you do that. Lastly, what are the couple things that we need to do? This is the new area that's going to change inside your inspector. And here we want to make sure that we assign that pit layer to pit, and maybe you call it pitfalls, but make sure you select that there. Secondly, we want to make sure that our character movement script knows where our base collider is because it's a specific collider that we're using and we now we have many colliders on our character. In this case, our base shadow has two main colliders. We have um, 
this box collider right here. I'm deactivating and activating it. You can see it right here. And that's what we've been doing for hits detection. And we have this other one, which is our capsule collider right here. And we mainly want to be examining our capsule collider in this episode for our, our pit detection. And so our movement script needs to know only that capsule collider. In order to get a reference to it, we can't just simply just drag in shadow over here because it might accidentally select the wrong one. So in this case, we have to do a, a little fancy thing. We're going to lock the inspector for our main character. And then from this vertical ellipsis, we're going to say we want to have add a new tab and we, and we want to add a second inspector. And we're going to split it so that we can see both. So this first one here with the lock is locked onto our character with the movement script. From there, we want to select our base shadow. And we want to make sure that we drag in the capsule collider for the shadow into this space right here. We don't want to accidentally drop in this box collider because then our, our code is, gonna, is not going to do what we want it to. We want to make sure that we're actually selecting the capsule collider into this spot. Cool. From there, we can close this, this old tab. We can click on that vertical ellipsis, close tab. And then we can do unlock. Make sure that we're selecting the movement script one more time. And we're going to examine these last two fields. Um, if you don't want this shadow to disappear when your character is over these, these pitfalls, because uh, I acknowledge that this is a personal preference. If you don't want this to disappear, then you can just simply uncheck this box. And when you jump over these pitfalls, the shadow is going to remain. Because I do acknowledge that it's it can give your player good indications of where your character could land. And if you want them to avoid pitfalls, it's good to indicate that this is where the shadow position actually is. Maybe in the future, we could change what this color of this shadow looks like, or maybe make it a smaller shape. We can definitely do that. work on that if that's something that you want us to see. If you want to see that, please leave a comment in the um, comment section. Cool. The last one that we want to make sure that we look at is this base collider. And it's very similar to this pit layer. We want to do two things for sure. We want to check this use layer mask. Check that one. We don't need to check anything else. And then in this layer mask area, select pit or pitfall, whatever you named those layers early on that we did in this episode. Other than that, then you're all set. Um, I'm going to move my character back and demo what we should see. So I'm going to make sure that my character, my Ninja Turtle, comes back to its starting location that we had at this episode. I'm going to split my game window. Just make it a little tidy here. Cool. And we're going to hit play. And I'm just going to make my turtle jump over some pitfalls. So jump, you can see that the shadow disappeared. Jump, shadow disappears. If I jump into this pit, then um, you should see in the console, oh, we're in a pit. And um, our character can no longer move. I acknowledge that can be kind of annoying, especially for playtesting. If you don't like that part and just want to see that we fell into the pit because you know that you want to deal damage and do things like play a death animation, then you can just simply go into detect pit and comment out this line 196. That way you can still get that feedback that, oh yeah, you did fall into the pit. We're going to do, we're going to implement some future things to it and you don't lose the aspect of making your character allowing your character to move around. So let's just go back and review one more time. Have my character move around, jump over this pit, jump over this pit, jump over this pit. Let's just fall into this one. Uh, we're in the pit. And um, since we commented out that movement part, we can still move our character and still do the things that we want to just to double check other things. All right, cool. I hope that you found this episode helpful. Uh, and I'll quickly upload the next one. And please leave comments in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do ask. I'll catch you all later. See ya.